Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, hello, my name is Amanda Ensing, and today is another episode of my Beauty and Brain series where I do my makeup, but I talk about politics, faith, current events, anything and everything, whether it's controversial or not, I'm here to chat, do my makeup, and show that you can be beauty, do makeup, but also be brains, be educated on politics, current events, things that are happening without following the mainstream, without following propaganda or fake news, actually being able to critically think and think for yourself. So I made myself a matcha. You can tell by how, oh my gosh, you see that drip? You can tell by this how hot it is here in Nashville. It is so hot, like summer is definitely here. Comment down below, let me know the temperature where you live, let me know where you're at right now. If you're interested in anything I put on my face, I will link it down in the description bar. I had a disclaimer in my last video, but in case you missed it, just because I'm using a certain brand does not mean I agree with that brand's beliefs. A lot of makeup companies are super woke now, um, and it's been a journey trying to find brands that support conservatives and support both sides. So I'm just kind of using things that I have, things that I like, and I'm not focusing on promoting anything. You can check the down bar if you do want to purchase anything that I've used on my face in any of my makeup tutorials. So let's just get started. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my one year update since I left LA. So I lived in LA for four years and I made a video when I moved to Nashville, my husband and I, we moved to Nashville March of 2020 and I made a video of why I left LA. But to be honest, in that video, I was still very much hurt. You know, we had just left and LA was a very toxic space for me and I was very careful of what I wanted to say in that video because I really didn't want to offend anyone. Now, I, I don't care, um, but I was just very much hurt. I wanted to make this video to tell you guys the God story of why I left LA, the encounter I had with God. I want to talk about what I've learned in the last over a year since I've left, the healing that I've done, and touch on a few things about Hollywood. I could literally make a whole series on story times of things that happened when I lived in LA and in Hollywood, if you guys are interested in that, maybe I'll do more videos like this and talk about things that happened in LA. So in the fall of 2019, I had an encounter with God and it threw me for a loop. I had gotten home one day from a trip and Raphael picked me up in the airport and I sat down on the couch and I just started crying and he was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Like. What's wrong? And I had heard God speak so loud and clear for the first time probably in my life. Like I've had convictions before, but it was a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, did I just hear that? And I knew Raphael was gonna look at me like, what just happened when I told him? But I looked at him and I said, we have to leave LA. God told me something bad's gonna happen. We need to move now. And we had planned on being in LA for at least another couple of years. Our goal was always to leave. But since we were building the beauty brand and you know, I worked with so many brands in LA, we didn't plan on leaving anytime soon. So this was in the fall of 2019. So Rafael looked at me and you could tell whenever I told him this, there was not a shadow of a doubt in his mind. He was like, okay, let's start planning to leave. As we started to plan to leave LA, God did everything but hold up neon signs in, in front of our face saying, you need to leave. So we were looking between Nashville and Florida. And my family is a couple hours from here. So obviously that was attractive. And everywhere we went, people would just bring up Tennessee and they would bring up Nashville. And the four years I had been living in LA, no one ever brought up Tennessee. And anytime someone would ask where I was from and I would say Tennessee, they would give me that look like, oh, you're from Tennessee. And it would always make me so aggravated because I'm like, what's wrong with Tennessee? So as we were preparing to leave, you know, it was bittersweet. I always say it's hard to move to LA, but it's even harder to leave because LA is just very expensive. I knew so many people that wanted to leave and were like, I can't afford to leave LA. It's really sad because it's, it's just very expensive. So everywhere we went, people would be like, have you heard of Nashville? 
have you heard of Nashville? Have you been to Nashville? And I'm like, why are, like, there were just so many God signs in our face that we were making the right decision. So in addition to this, I started having these dreams and I don't have dreams a lot. And when I do, they're net, they never make any sense. So it was something that stood out to me, like so much that I knew it was God trying to tell me something. And there's so much scripture in the Bible about how God speaks to us through dreams. And I didn't really realize this at the time. I realized it the last year as I've been digging into my Bible more and learning who Jesus is more. But at the time I had no idea. I just knew God was giving me a message. So this is when things started to get even more real. So in this dream, I would be in the water, like in the ocean, and I could see just right above the wave. And I like was drowning, like I knew in the dream that I was drowning. And right as I'm about to completely go under the water, all of a sudden I like transport and I'm in this room and I just, like I gasped for air. In this house, I knew it was a new house, it had like these very specific beige wooden floors. And I just thought, this is Nashville. Like I knew in the dream that it was Nashville. And every time I would like, right before I go under the water, I would appear in this house and I would gasp. And then I would just start crying happy tears. And it was just like, I could breathe. Like I couldn't explain it, but I could feel it in the dream. So fast forward, I came to Nashville to get a house for us. I only had one day to look at houses and I had picked out like seven houses that I was going to look at. And by the time I landed on my flight, which was only a couple of hours, there were four houses. And then by the time I was going to bed that night in my hotel room, there was three houses. So the next day, that was my only full day in Nashville because I was like, for sure, you know, one of these I'll, I'll love. And the housing market has just been so insane here. Like houses were going before people even looked at them. So I was already kind of bummed because the house I really liked was gone before my plane even landed. So I looked at the first two houses and they weren't it. Like I knew that that wasn't where we were supposed to be. I just, I didn't feel the energy. I was like, this, this isn't it. So I was really bummed because the last house I had to look at, the day was winding down, was a house that one of my friends actually came to look at for me initially. And she was like, you're not gonna like it. And so I wasn't really excited, but it was the only one that I had left. And it's kind of like, I need to figure something out like we are moving. So I go to look at this house and we open the door. And as soon as the realtor opens the door, I notice the floors and the floors were that same beige color from my dream. And it's like a very specific beige. I've never lived in a house with these color of floors. And I was like, something just feels like home here. And then I realized that the floors were the same color. And even like the living room looked so similar to my dream. And it caught me so off guard that I was really downplaying it in my head. I'm like, no, like th this can't be, this can't be. So I ended up touring the house and I fell in love with it. I was like, this is the house. So we ended up being in this house and we ended up obviously moving to Nashville. And a week from when our truck got here with our stuff was locked down. And I shudder to think of where we would be if we would have not left LA and if we would have stayed in, in LA during COVID, during everything. Then as the year went on, it wasn't just the pandemic. We were dealing with rioting and looting and the protests all over the country. And then there was the election year. And as the year started to progress, I really realized like, this is what God was trying to tell me, what he put on my heart, like something bad is going to happen here. Like it was loud and clear that God was telling me, your time in California is up, you need to leave. And I didn't understand it then, but once we moved and last year played out, I understood it. And Raphael and I talk about this all the time of, what if we didn't leave? Like we left California at the perfect time for us. And I thank God every day that I was able to hear and we were able to just move. When everything was happening, it was happening so fast. And it was just hard enough for me to kind of process what was happening and to listen to God and be obedient and to discern and to leave. And you know, if you followed me for any amount of time, and I know some of you have found me 
the last year, you know, this year. But for those of you who have been following me and have followed me since before I lived in LA, you would have seen you would have seen the effect LA had on me and on my content. Um, LA was a very dark place for me. God has done so much in my heart and in my life the last year, year and a half. And I'm just now at a point where I'm ready to talk about it, where I feel like I'm healed enough to talk about things that happened in my life and in my experience during those four years. Living in LA was something that I had dreamed about for a long time. You know, I always thought that I would grow up and move to a big city and I always thought I was a city girl until I actually moved to the city. And when I moved to LA, I was so bright eyed and naive. And I mean, I look back just so innocent to what LA really was. I mean, I didn't live there, so I, I couldn't have known. And even being in like the heart of the industry there, you know, entertainment, there's celebrities, it's paparazzi, it's music, it's movies, it's now influencer type of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of that. Living there, it was like pulling back the curtain of what the beauty industry really is. And, you know, I met some great people, but I also really saw like the behind the scenes, like the behind the camera. And when I lived in Tennessee, because I'm from Tennessee, when I lived in Tennessee and was doing beauty content, to be honest, I was so much happier in Tennessee than I was in LA because LA is just a very dark cloud of energy. Like all of the time, it's spiritual warfare every single day, all day. And the first thing I did when I moved was find a church. I was like, I need a church. And it was even hard to find a church there. Like even in all the years I was there, there are churches I went to. And looking back, the churches that I went to definitely were not spirit led. Not to say that there aren't spirit led churches there. There definitely are. But the churches that I would go to were still very much like modern progressive Christianity, which isn't biblical Christianity. There's no such thing as a modern progressive Christian. It's either biblical truth or it's not. I definitely had a picture in my mind of what LA was. And then once I lived there, obviously it was a very, very different thing. And when I moved there, I thought, oh, I'm gonna meet like amazing people and collab with other beauty influencers and like have this big group of friends. Like whenever Snapchat was really popular, that's when I was just moving to LA. And you see like all of the beauty, beauty people in LA and they all hang out and they all love each other. They really don't. But I didn't know that these people weren't really friends in real life, that they just use each other for props and for clout and to climb up the social ladder. Like I genuinely thought a lot of these people were, were actually friends in real life. And I thought that, you know, what they posted is what they were. But I realized, you know, once I moved that that's not how it was at all at all. So coming from a small town and moving to LA was like already such a, a big culture shock in itself. And I had traveled to LA for work and conventions and stuff, but it's very different traveling to LA and living in LA. There are two very different things, you know? And that's with anywhere. Like you can travel somewhere and love it because you're just visiting. But when you live there, you're like in the nitty gritty every day. One of the sad things about the creative industry in LA and like with influencing and YouTube kind of stuff, whatever you want to call it, content creation, most people I knew, most people that people watch don't like LA and they'll tell you, yeah, I don't like it here. It's toxic. But there were so many people that would complain that they hate LA so much and it's so toxic that are part of the reason why the influencer space and the beauty community is toxic and it never made any sense to me because you would see like all like the public drama which is usually just really thrown out of proportion or things are just put up for views but it wasn't really what was happening behind the scenes like there are a lot of people that will do anything for views and clout and i mean anything 
I truly believe that there are some levels of success that you cannot attain in the entertainment industry, music, movies, and even the influencing social media community without selling your soul and without giving something up in return. If you've looked into the music industry and celebrities and, you know, literally like open devil worshiping that you see in the music industry and how they literally tell you that they sold their souls and they're not joking, what makes you think that that doesn't happen on social media? I mean, look at how big social media is now. YouTubers, Instagrammers, TikTokers, social media personalities in general can have a lot of reach. And if you've paid attention to any of the big tech censorship that's happened the last year or so, why do you think they push certain people in certain topics? Because it goes with their agenda. I caught on pretty quickly of the types of agendas and things that were being pushed in social media by big tech, by social media platforms, the types of messages and things that were being pushed to fit a narrative. And if you weren't playing along with that, if you weren't playing into those politics, then you could forget about any kind of career. You could forget about, you know, any kind of monumental growth because they want to control all of the information that's being put out. They want to make sure that the people that are gaining tons of followers and getting all these views are pushing a narrative that the people who own big tech agree with. And that's not to say everyone with big platforms sold their soul or is pushing something. That's not true at all. There are lots of successful people on social media who have big platforms who are authentically themselves. I'm just saying be careful of who you follow because there are a lot of people that are not what they post and not what they seem and they actually don't care about anyone but themselves and they're part of a very larger plan. If you haven't been following the newest with Free Britney, with Britney Spears and her conservatorship, that I think is a huge red pill for everyone. If you haven't listened to her testimony that came out, I mean, it is devastating. It is so sad, so sad to hear. This is a person, it doesn't matter if they're a celebrity, if they're a millionaire, if they're a billionaire, it doesn't matter. She is a slave. Like she literally does not control anything in her life. She doesn't control her finances. She doesn't control what goes into her body. She talked about the medications they had her on. Um, they even had her on lithium, she said. I mean, it is just so sad. And I wanna make a point that so many people were like, this is so crazy that she has an IUD, she has the birth control because they won't allow her under their conservatorship to have kids and she wants to have more kids. And people are like, this is so sad, like she shouldn't be forced to do that. I agree. But that brings me to another point. If you agree that Britney Spears should not have to be on birth control when she doesn't want to be, then you should also agree that people shouldn't have to get vaccinated for COVID if they don't want to. <laughs> Even as a little girl, like I would dance in front of the mirror to all of her videos and I loved Britney Spears growing up. And here is someone that everyone thinks she has it all, but she really has nothing. And I really think that Britney is going to be a huge floodgate to exposing things that have happened in Hollywood. I mean, how many documentaries and people have come forward on their experiences in Hollywood before people actually believe it? And since leaving Hollywood, I look back and think, you know, so much of that toxic energy I felt was literally from Hollywood, like the evil things that happen in Hollywood. I mean, the human trafficking, sex trafficking, pedophilia, like all of these nasty, vile things that happen in Hollywood. She said for, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember everything that she said in her testimony, but she said something along the lines of for 13 years, she's been sitting, staring at a door and she can't walk out of it. I mean, literally she's a captive of her own home. She doesn't control her finances. She doesn't control what doctors she sees. She doesn't control what medication she's on. They sold the narrative to the public that I think she had dementia or I don't know if they said she was bipolar, but I remember them just selling to the narrative that she was not fit to control her finances and that it was all to protect her. 
BS. I mean, the fact that you have someone like Britney Spears, who, how many tours has she done? She's done so many tours. She's made them millions and millions of dollars, but she's unfit to spend her own money when she's making all of these people rich around her. I mean, talk about corrupt judges. Like, who are the judges that are allowing this conservatorship to go on? Yet, let's change topics for a second. You have someone like Hunter Biden talking about smoking crack and smoking Parmesan cheese and all these things and the laptop, like all these things, right? And he's able to be free, but someone like Britney Spears is a captive of her own home? Do you know what I mean? She said all she wanted was for her boyfriend to pick her up and drive her away in his car. It is so sad. It is so sad. Brittany also said that they made her perform when she was sick. How sad and disturbing is that? Like, sure, like, you know, sometimes you have to go to work and you're not feeling well, but here's someone who's doing like a full Vegas show and she's sick and they're making her perform. She said that she was working seven, I think she said she was working seven days a week and all she wanted to do was take a vacation. She said after her first Vegas tour, I think she did it for four years, she wanted a break and they said no, that they that her management could like sue her if she didn't perform and didn't do the extra, I think it was another four years of a tour. I mean, it's so sick and twisted. And to think these celebrities are propped up as goals, right? In the media, paparazzi on social media, like they're who every little girl should look up to Britney and she's goals, but she doesn't even live the life that she portrays that she's living. And it makes me so sad because I can't imagine having to do all the things she does and put on this good face and then the media just lies about her like i remember when she shaved her head and how they tried to paint her as like she was crazy and how many cries for help did she put out that no one even realized you know like when i started seeing her social media posts the last year or so and people would always like flood the comments like, you know, Brittany, are you okay? Are you okay? I mean, you can tell that she's not okay. Let me know your thoughts down below on everything happening with Brittany. I've been praying for her. We should all be praying for her and praying for justice and praying that she is literally set free, free Brittany, that she can live her life the way that she wants her God given natural born right to be a free human being she was born free by god created by god and that's how she should be able to live so when i moved to la going back to my journey there i was just so excited to be like in la and to have a new chapter i'd gone through a really hard season of heartbreak and you know my town it just held so many bad memories that I really had nothing to lose. And I thought, well, I'm gonna move and you know be closer to all these brands that I already work with. And you know, when I got to LA, it just showed the heart of the beauty industry. And the beauty industry and makeup is supposed to be something that's fun. It's supposed to be something that's expressive, that makes you feel empowered. And the beauty industry, like what I experienced, the bulk of it in Hollywood was so toxic and ugly. It hurt me more than I realized because I started to like go through my drawers of products and be like, well, I know what this brand really stands for. I know who this brand is. I've never been the type of person that can just be fake, that can, you know, not like someone and then just pretend like everything's fine and put on a face for the camera. It's never been me, it will never be me. And, you know, I would see so many times an influencer treat someone so bad and do terrible things and say terrible things and then they act like nothing was wrong. And I'm like, this is not how you treat people 
and I'm not perfect, but I would just see some of these things happen and I'm like, I want nothing to do with this space and it affected my work a lot because it almost felt like moving to LA showed me Santa Claus wasn't real. Like as far as the beauty industry goes, entertainment goes, you know, so much is not what it, se what it seems. And for example, one time I was at a get together, a private get together with a few other influencers. And I remember all of us just sitting down and Raphael had come with me. And this was the first time he had ever come with me like to a private kind of, you know, other people, other creators who do what I do in beauty. It was just gossip, gossip, like bashing other creators and bashing brands and like just so much just ugliness. And I remember Raphael actually like got up and left the table and I was like just sitting there and I remember for a few hours I literally just sat there with nothing to say. And if I told you who was at that table, it would make your mouth drop. And for a while I kept going to events and thinking, well, maybe it's gonna get better. Like maybe it's gonna get better. And nothing ever changed. And there was a long period of time where I wasn't going to events at all just because there was really no point for me. You know, I didn't feel like it benefited me in any way. And these were things that when I lived in Tennessee, I thought, oh, I can't wait to go to beauty events and see the new makeup launches and be around other people who love beauty. But I realized that there are some really great people in the beauty industry, but they never get the recognition that they should. It's always the people who are toxic that seem to be at the top and the people who, you know, always play the victim and play that, oh, people are so mean to them or that, you know, they just want to do makeup and have fun that are the ones that are like starting the problems and doing shady things. And this is not me calling out anyone by any means. If I want to call out someone, I will just say their name. I just mean like as a whole, there were so many amazing, talented people in beauty, but they didn't, in my opinion, they didn't get the recognition that they deserved. And so when you have this like toxic circle of people in LA that stay at the top and that are lifted up, everyone else just kind of watches it. And then it kind of started a chain reaction of influencers that were up and coming thought, well, how do I get attention? Well, I'm going to start dragging people. I'm going to start exposing people. I'm going to start being catty. And the beauty industry from when I first started making YouTube videos in like 2012, 2013, became this monster of an industry and maybe it's always been that way social media just made it worse i don't know but when i started youtube it was so innocent and you know people seem to really just love makeup like that's why i started doing this series of just doing my makeup and talking about things that are important to me or politics or faith and all these types of things because i I'm not going to live my life for anyone else. I'm not going to create content that other people want me to create. I have to do what's true to myself. And being in the beauty industry for so long and being in LA for so long, I felt like the longer I was in LA, the, the walls around me just kept getting like closer and closer and closer to where I felt like I couldn't breathe anymore. LA was a place that I moved to because I thought it was accepting and people could express themselves and you know kind of discover their creativeness since so much of the industry was there but my experience in LA was quite the opposite LA was a place where if you don't think act and talk like us then you can't sit with us it wasn't anything that Hollywood portrays itself to be on TV which honestly what what is what it portrays itself to be, right? Like we've learned that by this point. LA was just such a vain place to live in. Like it felt like you were walking into an Instagram feed at all times and you had to act a certain way and look a certain way. Even the way people would communicate. I feel like the best way to explain how people are in LA is jaded because it's a very hard place to live. It's a very busy place. It's not a very personal spot. And I feel like everyone is just so jaded because they're just numb. Depending on how long you've lived in LA, people are numb. And the nicest people I ever met in LA were the locals, like hands down, the best people I'd ever meet are people that were born and raised in LA. And if you go out towards the beach, it's a totally different vibe. Like if you go out to Redondo 
or even to Torrance. Like it's not, that's not really LA, but it's, it's so nice. People are so nice there, but there's just something about being in the city. Like I always felt so insecure. I always just felt like I had this weight on my shoulders at all times. Like spiritually, the spiritual warfare was so thick every single day. And I had what I feel like was a drought where I feel like I didn't really hear from God for a long time. And I just felt it's very rare to find people that actually care about you and that want a connection with you, you know, more than what you can do for them or what kind of clout you can give them. Um, it was just a very toxic place. And, you know, at the time I, I didn't really understand in the beauty industry, like I, I kept thinking, how do we move forward as a beauty community? Like, how do we come back from this? And when I left LA last year and I came to Nashville, I finally felt like I could breathe because I felt like I had my own inner peace back. And even when we would travel, like I traveled a lot when I lived in LA and anytime I would just like get on a plane to leave LA, it's almost like I could just breathe. Like it's just something about the city that just never sat well with my spirit. And I had my, I had my fun times for sure. So it's not like it was all bad. But it was a very like it was not the place for me. I'm glad I lived there. I learned a lot, but it was just not where my forever spot. It was a temporary spot. With the pandemic and everything that was happening last year, I looked around to my peers and people that I knew in LA, people that you know were like other beauty content creators, and I watched as a whole circle of people just acted like nothing was happening. Like with the craziness happening in our nation, they were just posting business as usual. And looking back, God was really preparing me for the season that I've been in because I went through this season last year where I was so unmotivated to post content because I was working on healing myself. Like I felt last year like God was getting ready to put me into something else, but I didn't know what that meant. I talked about last year in a get ready with me, like I want to do something that's so much more than makeup. And I kept telling God, like, God, I feel like I can help people so much more than just doing makeup, how? And little did I know I'd be in this season that I am now. And I would be talking about current events and talking about, like, I went all in with Jesus last year and talking about politics and talking about truth, like truth that's being hidden from us. And we're living in biblical times right now. I never imagined the plan that God had for me. And it's beautiful to watch it unfold. And now coming out on the other side of living in LA, learning a lot, going through a lot, now being in the place that I am now, oh man. It's really cool to look back and see like how strong you are and how God gets you through things. Like the strength that God gives you to get through the storms of life. If you just focus on God and not the storm, I promise you, he will get you through every storm because alone we are not enough, but with God, we are enough. And how amazing and beautiful is that? If you've been following me for a long time and you kind of saw me pull away a little bit in the last couple of years, especially when I lived in LA, like I'm the type of person where when I feel like my pain could hurt someone else, I just, I pull away. Like I just like, I hide. Does that make sense? So there were so many times in LA where I just felt like, I just, I just couldn't. Like I felt like there was so much spiritual warfare. There were so many things happening behind the scenes in the beauty industry and in LA. And I just, I couldn't come on and fake it. And it messes with you creatively so much. It messes with your head because here you are trying to like do makeup tutorials and you know have a space where people can come and escape and it was very difficult for me like mentally it was very hard and and the darker and the more toxic that the beauty industry got the more and more I didn't want anything to do with it but at the same time I didn't want darkness to win right like I wanted to be here providing encouragement and empowerment to everyone that loved makeup as, as much as I did. And I would never stop making content just because there are toxic people in an industry. Like I always wanted to come onto my platform and encourage you guys and empower you guys. And 
I wanted to share, you know, a little bit more about my journey today because I think it's something that people are afraid to talk about when they experience these types of things living in cities or you know going through hard times people are afraid to talk about it when it's part of your journey and i truly believe that god makes your pain your platform like your pain becomes your testimony and you never know who you could inspire and who you could help just by sharing how god transformed you how he saved you how he healed you and just pulled you out of you know dark places in your life or you know guided you and gave you strength through hard times in your life and i am a strong woman and that is all thanks to god and without him i wouldn't be here and be doing the things that i'm doing now and i look back at you know the last couple of years that were tough and to be where i'm at right now it was all worth it i realized that the way we move forward in the beauty industry is to create our own vertical to create our own space not to adhere to the standards that these woke companies that follow propaganda put on us not to follow these like woke far leftist people who try to put us in a box and you know try to enact groupthink and you know have this totalitarianism mob culture type of mentality you know we should be encouraging critical thinking and you know, thinking for yourself and daring to question the narrative and not just going along with whatever the media tells you, you know, whatever the beauty industry tries to virtue signal to you of what their standards of inclusivity are. Like inclusivity means everyone, different beliefs, different thoughts, you know, not bowing to the virtue signaling that we see in Hollywood, in entertainment, in the beauty industry. I am not gonna be someone that will compromise my faith and my values and my beliefs to fit in with society, to fit in with the world. To me, that is not beauty. That is being put in a box of what you can say and what you can do. And this is a free country and God gave us freedom when we were born and I'm gonna be here using my voice, my God-given voice. I'm going to leave you guys with one of my favorite verses and it is Romans 8 28. God placed this into my life right before I moved to LA and I read it now and it just makes me smile so big. So in Romans 8 28 it says, and we know that God causes everything to work for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. I read this and I look back at the past couple of years of my life and I see how God worked everything for my good and for his glory. And you know, no matter what season you're in, keep your eyes on Jesus, not the storm. Focus on him, keep pushing, keep getting into the word and watch what God does in this next season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, give it a like, make sure you hit subscribe down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so your notifications are turned on. Drop me a comment down below for any topic requests for next week's video. I hope you guys have a great week. God bless. Don't forget also to download my brand new podcast, Liberty Before Lipstick. New episodes are every Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.